We've come to the western part of Virginia, near the border with West Virginia, in the Appalachian mountain chain. In this part of Virginia, you have these tectonic ridges coming down from the northeast, extending down along this border, and it's in those mountains that you'll find the remote areas that are full of deer and bear and have all the ingredients that a Bigfoot would like. This part of Virginia, a Bigfoot would live off the same set of animals that they live off in Ohio or West Virginia. In the fall and winter, it would be deer. And in the spring and summer, there's just a variety of plants and small animals that it can go after to keep itself fed, just like the many bears that live in these same mountains. We're on our way to meet a guy named Roger Williams. His hunting club got a very interesting photo of something which could be a Sasquatch, Guys, today is opening day for hunting season on deer, so we're really gonna need to take that into account as we're going out into the woods. You can ask any hunter, when opening day comes for deer season, the deer all scatter and they know where the safe spots are. They know where the no hunting zones are. It will be difficult for us to initiate an investigation on the eve of hunting season. Deer know exactly what that day is, and it's tomorrow. But hopefully it'll work to our advantage, because we know the squatches and the deer will probably move to the safety zone where there's no hunting allowed. Let's look at that photo again, Cliff. I want to see that. Yeah, it's right. I have it right here. You know, when I first saw it, my heart skipped a beat, because I thought, is that a really good photo of a young squatch? Either this is a bear looking like a Sasquatch, or it's a young Sasquatch that looks like a bear. Kudos to Roger for bringing this photograph to our attention and sharing it with the world. One of the telling things about whether this even could be a Bigfoot is the habitat that the photograph was obtained in. Now, if the habitat is good for Bigfoots and has a lot of squatchy elements, well, then maybe that's going to open the door for possibly being a Bigfoot. I don't see any reason why that is not a bear. But by going to the location, getting an idea of the size, finding out what's also happened. Is he hearing anything? Are there neighbors around that have heard anything? We need those types of details from him also. After spending over 15 years in the backcountry, Alaska and all throughout the Pacific Northwest, studying the brown bear and black bear's interactions with salmon, I've seen bears in all different situations. Looking at this photograph, I see nothing but a black bear. It's exactly what the fur looks like. This photograph certainly attracted a lot of attention over the last few months in the Bigfoot community. Now, I kind of want to see what all the hubbub's about. And this guy, he says he doesn't know what's in the photograph. Well, I, we might be able to solve that mystery for him, but at the same time, he's also never come forth to say, I don't think that's a Bigfoot. What makes him think that it might be? On the way in to meet Roger, we're seeing a lot of elements of an area where there would be Bigfoots around. We're seeing a lot of deer, we're seeing swamps, and there's a big railroad bed that follows the Appalachian Mountains. That's the sort of place that a Bigfoot would probably move through. So it is a Bigfoot area by a couple of different types of criteria. But we're pretty close to the actual spot, right? Yes, mm -hmm. right in there. Okay. All right. So tell us about how that picture came about, please. We usually set the uh, cameras out in July after the horns have developed on the deer because we're deer hunters. And we like to see what's using the area we hunt in. We carried the disc home and it's like opening Christmas presents. You put it in the TV and you watch and see what you've got. So what makes you believe the figure you're seeing in the image is not a bear? I've seen several bear images. They're all thick coated, dark colored fur. This animal did not have any of that, those characteristics. What struck me was the length of the arm and the length of the foot. It just seemed like it was longer than a bear. You look at that photo, it makes you do a double take. You're looking at there's some features that go, that looks like some type of primate arm, but bears don't have a butt. You know, they don't have like big butt muscles. You talk to a lot of witnesses, they go, I don't know why they call it Bigfoot, they should call it Big Butt because it has such a defined gluteus maximus. Have you ever heard about um, anybody seeing a Bigfoot or, or maybe hearing strange noises that they can't explain from the general area? Well, Gatewood Reservoir is just across the mountain. Uh, a fellow told me that one night he was camping up there, and about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, he heard a yowl. Mm -hmm. 
raspy, throaty growl sound from the upper part of the lake and said he wouldn't have thought much about it except it was repeated. Well, why don't we get down to business here? Let's see if we can put Bobo in the same position. Let's like, take a few pictures for ourselves and do a comparison. Yep. If this is a Bigfoot at all, it's clearly not an adult. So the size comparison won't really do us any good. However, maybe we can get Bobo in the right position and we can compare his limbs and his body and that sort of thing to what we see in the picture. This is gonna be a tough recreation for Bobo because he has to maintain that position. And this isn't at all like the normal plus size underwear modeling that he's used to doing. Well. Not bad. Pretty good job there, Bob. He's got much longer legs than that thing. Yeah, but what really is standing out is the lack of the shoulder and also the lack of muscle definition here on the back side. That looks like a bear. I don't see anything that says definitely a bear, though. Do you see the arch of his back there? That kind of tells me that isn't necessarily just the arch of the back of a bear, because a primate would make that same nice big curve. Roger, you seeing elements of it there that are telling you it's not a bear, and I am also. This could be an ape. I'm inclined to say that that thing is a bear. I don't really see a well-defined shoulder, and Sasquatches are well-known for their broad shoulders. And also, look at those hips. They are not the hips of a biped, in my opinion. They are the hips of a quadruped. Roger didn't know what was in the photograph, and he was hoping that we might be able to give him an answer. Well, I think it's a bear, not a Bigfoot. I'm not sure that's the answer he wanted, but that's my answer. I've never seen anything like that before and I'm looking behind me much more often now when I'm in a <laughs> Well, thanks for your help. You bet. Let's get right, it on right. back to the cars. Yeah. However, that doesn't mean that there are no Bigfoots around here. Roger told us about a guy he knows that heard crazy screams about two miles away from here. There could definitely be Bigfoots around here. I mean, we're only about a mile or so from the West Virginia border where we almost always get action. There's certainly more than enough habitat here for them. This seems like as good a spot as any to start a Virginia investigation. Okay, here's what we got. Appalachian Trail is right up there. Down there is the New River, border of Virginia and West Virginia. The Appalachian Trail crosses that river not far from here. And today being the first day of hunting season actually for once puts us at an advantage because this is a no hunting zone. So Matt, why don't you head with me uphill, Bob and Renee, why don't you guys go downhill and hopefully one of us will run into a Bigfoot. All right, let's do it. We're very close to the New River, which forms the border between West Virginia and Virginia. The Appalachian Trail comes through here, so we've decided to do our first night investigation on the last hill in Virginia before the AT crosses that river. So Cliff and I are gonna go up to the top, Bobo and Renee are gonna go down to the bottom. We're gonna see if there's anything around here. Maybe there is, but the Appalachian Trail is a good starting point. Here's a nice spot, Bobes. Hell yeah. Getting to the top of this, I'm starting to wheeze on the Weezer Trail. I was wheezing the whole way. Man, it's pouring. Hey, before we turn this corner, this might be our last chance to make any vocalizations up this canyon. 